We're now at your eighth studio album. What kind of Usher are you giving us on this album? Are you giving us 8701 Usher, Confessions Usher? Oh, that's the two that you like the most. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Um, a little bit of all of them. I mean, I'm even going back to my way a little bit too. All right. Yeah, so um, here's the thing. Uh, in making this album, um, I don't think I was inspired by uh, anything more than uh, really kind of the freedom of where I was in making all those albums. Mm -hmm. And um, while they probably were inspired by other artists, uh, this album I decided to listen to my own music. Yeah. And, um, and really go back to, I guess, the source of what I had done throughout all of the years because I realized that over the last 20 years, right, with Confessions 1, that, that's a 10 year anniversary for that record. Mm -hmm. Um, but over the last 20 years, at every benchmark where I decided to make an album, I represent something different to that person. So I want to make sure that no one feels left out, that everybody gets a little bit of what they love. That is Usher, right? I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, I don't know, kind of, I didn't want to necessarily go towards one style or anything okay. like that because Everybody loves something different. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what kind of topics, what's the topic um, that you would say is most prevalent on the album? I know with Confessions, it was kind of like, you know, you had stepped outside of your relationship. Now, with this one, what are you, what are you telling us? What story are you telling? The story to be told, mm. well, I haven't finished it yet. That's one. Mm -hmm. But as far as I know uh, and what I've created really has been... Uh, kind of in the space of reconnecting uh, with life uh, in a way that brings me back from a place, right? I felt like, I don't know, maybe in the last three, four albums, um, in being experimental, um, I don't know, maybe I, I disconnected in a way. Okay. And, and not disconnected from a specific audience, but like I kind of disconnected emotionally in a lot of ways. So, you know, maybe I have to hold on to this place, this thing, this, this thing that might not necessarily be something you can tangibly put your hands on, right? Mm -hmm. But an emotion, a feeling that brings me back to life. And, um, you know, sometimes it could be a musical change that does that. Sometimes it could be, you know, love and passion the connection, the sex of whatever it may be at that time with who it is. Um, but all of those things make up a project that feels like I'm, I'm getting to know Usher in a way that I didn't feel him. <laughs> or I maybe I felt him at one point in time. I haven't felt him in a while. Okay. You know, some of it may be venting at times. Uh, again, as I said, I haven't finished the whole album, so you know I work on like maybe 50 songs and making an album, and then I slim it down mm -hmm. to about 12 or 13 songs. Okay. So, yeah. And on one of those 12 or 13, I'm hearing Drake will be. Yo. Um, so what um, <laughs> is that record about? How did you two connect? Um, we were. Well, first of all, I, I've been around him a few times. He came to Atlanta. It was the first time we were around each other. We talked about working on something together. Um, later on, I kind of seen him in passing and told him, you know, if I, if I ever feel like I have something, I'll reach out to you. Uh, I happened to uh, be on the set of She Came to Give It to You. He was there. Um, I had him come over, listen to some of the songs that I thought were definite. I, listened, I let him listen to three songs. Mm -hmm. And he identified the record that he felt like, actually he asked me to send him all the records. And I said, well, which one do you love more than anything? And um, he selected this record um, called Slow Motion. And um, what he's touching on in the song, it's a little bit personal. I think that, um, you know, it's always great for artists to kind of use, you know, where they are at the, at the time, you know, as inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, but that song, it's kind of, it's a relationship song. Um, 
<laughs> That's enough for you. <laughs> 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 um, and now we are, um, you just announced a tour that you yep. are experiencing. Mm -hmm. Now that experience word makes me think that there are going to be some theatrics and craziness going on. Can you tell me a little bit about the tour? Hey, hey listen, every day is theatrical and <laughs> crazy with me. Uh -huh. Shit, you never know what's going on. <laughs> but um, there are a few unexpected guests okay. uh, that I'm not going to tell you. Mm -hmm. They just happen. Um, there are... There's this, uh, there's this magic hour within my show. Um, the show normally runs about mm, two and a half hours to three hours. Probably run three hours. Um, don't quote me yet. <laughs> but um, there is this magic hour in my mind that's all about the experience that's different. The entire show is that. But that's when something happens that will probably never happen again. It happens every night. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, now, I've been to um, a few of your shows before, and I know that you normally, like, one time there was, like, water on the ceiling and stuff like that. Are there any one little small detail? Is there, like, anything that's, like, out of this world mind-blowing that you could just give us a little bit on? I just think the the free, I guess, you know, it is the, the unexpected nature of it. Okay. The fact that um, you just don't know what to expect. You have to come knowing that there is going to be a surprise. Uh, is it going to be the dance? Is it going to be what I'm physically doing? Is it going to be the instruments played? Will it be the special guest? Will it be the connection and where I am at that moment? Will I be, you know, in the audience, you never know what's going to happen. I don't want to tell you too much because I don't want to give it away. But the UR experience is about connecting with my fans in a way that I haven't done um, in a while. You know, I, I actually have had the opportunity to play a few shows um, recently. It's been three years since I've toured, but I've had a, a few shows within the last year that um, gave me an opportunity to tear away all the choreography and just really make a connection. Sometimes it was me playing an instrument, sometimes it was me you know, just talking to the audience, making them feel the connection, having a real dialogue in the moment. That right there felt like something that I've never felt. And I just wanna, I wanna have that experience you know, throughout North America, 27 cities, and uh, give you guys something to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something that people were talking about was you and Nicki Minaj's VMA performance. Yeah. Um, you guys have a great connection on stage. How do you, what's your relationship like with Nicki? Oh man, me and Nicki, you know, <laughs> since uh, Lil Freak, you know, it's been, it's been a, a great artist relationship. You know, every time, you know, I bring her a record or an idea, you know, the first time it was Polo and he brought her to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, after we made that connection, I was just waiting for the right moment, waiting for the right song. And also, too, you know, ke keeping my line open as well in the event that she ever felt like that was something that she wanted to try. And when I played her, um, she came to give it to you. She had actually worked with Pharrell and uh, had already kind of started that dialogue because she was working on her album. Mm -hmm. But she loved it. And uh, she, there was no question. She was like, I'm on it. Just give me a couple of days and I'll get it over to you, and she did it. She showed up. Did you guys uh, feel that extra urge to kill it? I know she had her little malfunction um, earlier in the show. Yeah. Did you guys like come back out with that extra urge, like, no, nah, we're gonna kill this one? We didn't really talk that much, you know. Um, we spoke, I think, in rehearsals the day of. Oh, wow. But leading up uh, to it, we, uh, we didn't have a lot of time, but Thank God that she's such a professional that she's able to, you know, uh, fall in and, and understand exactly how to take her place. And I, I think I made it easy enough for her. I just said, toot that booty up right here. <laughs> and I got it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, and then lastly, um, I just saw you on the VH1 documentary, um, The Untold Story of Atlanta. Yeah. Don't quote me on the title. Um, but do you feel, I was on the phone with Ludacris the other day, and he was saying that um, sometimes he feels as though Atlanta's story is not told, or sometimes, you know, even almost looked over in a sense. Because right now it seems that ATL is like 
owning hip hop in a way. How do you feel? Do you feel sometimes that Atlanta gets overlooked when it comes to hip hop culture? I mean, I think in some ways, um, you know, all things and all people who are great at what they do, you know, they feel, you know, miscredited or uncredited. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the piece is really, you know, uh, defining in terms of people understanding the history of hip hop yeah. in, in Atlanta. Um, you know, we have definitely had something to say for a long time. Um, I think for me as an artist who has been influenced by hip hop, been influenced by rock, been influenced by R&B, been influenced by many different styles of music, it would take a place like Atlanta that is somewhat a melting pot of all those experiences, whether you're in East Point, West End, you know, Decatur, College Park, or in North Springs, mm -hmm. Alpharetta, you know what I'm saying? Like all of, you know, managing uh, that place from, uh, from the city, right? It creates uh, such a, a diverse experience in music. So if anything, I think it's fueled uh, who I am as an artist, which is why I try different genres of music. And I'm an Atlanta artist. I'm yeah. an artist who uh, came from Atlanta and, and really kind of, that set the foundation for how open I was to try different things, mm -hmm. right? Um, artists like, you know, like uh, Dallas Austin and Holland Place Mobsters that you'll hear, you'll hear about in the piece, hopefully, you know, they were a rock band, but they were R&B. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, Wishbone, or you know, um, you know, so many different Van Hunt, so many different people out of out of Atlanta that just gave you a a different a different texture. Atlanta definitely is one of those places that not only um, continues to to introduce different styles of culture, but also to um, are responsible for artists like CeeLo, artists like you know Andre Three Thousand, artists like myself. Yeah.